This video is brought to you by coffee. <laughs> I'm really excited, I'm amped. You know what, I've had so much coffee and sugar that the white looks beautiful, this white table and the black background and the gray box, like I'm not complaining anymore. All right, can we do this? Hey, I like, that's really cool. I remember when I was in gem school that I was taking these practice exams for the 20 stone, which I've talked to you guys about. I remember getting iolite and tanzanite mixed up quite frequently. Iolite is trichroic. And we've talked about pleochroism before. We'll jump into that, but I wanna jump into this box and see a gorgeous gemstone. You ready? Okay, that is not what I was expecting. My hopes versus my expectation versus reality are very different. I was hoping for a beautiful pair of eyelight earrings with a little tag from JTV saying you can keep them. I was expecting a cut stone, yay big, but y'all, this is my reality. Did not expect this. I was not expecting these to be as included as they are. I was expecting a little bit clearer of a crystal. I was not expecting cabochons. I was expecting a faceted gem. I did not expect the stones to be this large. I've always been fascinated by that color. It's kind of like a purple-y, slightly bluish purple. All right, so as mentioned earlier, Eyelight is known for its pleochroism. The stone is trichroic. So that basically means when you look through a dichroscope, and as you change the directions of the stone, you're gonna see three colors. It's gonna be kind of a colorless to a yellow, like a bluish gray, and then I think of a violet too. The reason that's important is because when you're looking, when as a gemologist, when you're trying to differentiate stones, if a stone is pleochroic, if it's dichroic or trichroic, um, that's a really awesome, simple way to differentiate between another stone that may not exhibit that property. Typically, iolite is not gonna be found over 10 carats. Anything over 10 carats is pretty rare. The stone is about seven, seven and a half on the most scale, so this is perfect for jewelry. Typically, you're not gonna see all these inclusions. That's why I was really surprised. I thought it was gonna be a clear crystal. It typically is eye clean which I believe is a type one stone. And we've talked about kind of type one, type two, and type three, the varying degrees of inclusions that are seen um, with the naked eye. Mineralogists often refer to iolite as cordierite. What's really cool about iolite cordierite is that it can exhibit three types of phenomenon asterism, chatoyancy, and adventurescence, which is super cool because we actually have an example of the adventurescence. Bloodshot cordierite is referred to iolite um, that exhibits hematite platelets, and it kind of can give it a red, um, red appearance, and the hematite can give it the adventurescence. I don't know if you can see there's red platelets and it kind of shimmers. Eyelite can often be very, very dark, so the material is cut pretty shallow, which I think is probably what's happy, happening here. You can see this is a very shallow stone. Um, the reason lapidaries do that is because if you cut it shallow, more light can actually get through the stone. If it's really, really thick, it's gonna be a lot darker. All right, so right here you can see the really beautiful crystal. This is actually the stone I was expecting to unbox. Oh, cool, this stone exhibits if you're a new gemologist and you haven't been in the business that long, you can see why this is kind of easy to mix up with tanzanite. So that is why we always use our tests and do our research and don't cite ID. Um, and I think you guys know plenty about pleochroism. That is definitely one of the reasons I love this stone so much. It's um, If I were to have a dichroscope, you could see a different color in each direction. I can kind of see here, each direction I'm looking at the stone, I can actually see a different color. This is kind of that yellow I was talking about. Um, and then it does kind of like the bluish gray. I don't know if this is gonna be something we're gonna be able to see that might have to be a close up camera. But anyways, that is one of the reasons that I wanted Eyelight on the show to show you all trichroism and talk about pleochroism. Um, and also, you know, Eyelight is not hard on the eyes. All right, so we like chemical structures on this channel. Eyelight has a pretty complex chemical structure. It is a magnesium aluminum silicate and Magnesium and aluminum can sometimes be replaced with iron. Iron is actually what's responsible 
for the fluorescence in Iolite. All right, so the name for Iolite actually comes from two Greek words, Ios and Lithos for violet stone. The stone has a pretty long history. Some actually believe that the um, Iolite can help with sleep and unlocking um, creativity. You all are familiar with the industry enough to know that there's quite a few misnomers and Iolite is not exempt from this issue. One of the misnomers for Iolite is actually water sapphire and this has a pretty cool history. Also, it is called poor man's tanzanite because of the trichroism. All right, so we're gonna take a closer look. I wanna do, this is the stone I thought I would get. I want you to take a closer look while the stone is in the tweezers at that beautiful color and how that crystal is eye clean. You really can't see anything in that. And, um, you know, think about what would you use this stone for? Would this be a pendant? Would you, you know, leave it on your shelf? I would love this in a pair of earrings. Um, so comment below and let me know what you would do with highlight. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about Eyelight. I think the favorite fact today was that it was once called Water Sapphire, which is super cool. But anyways, like, subscribe. You don't wanna miss out on what we've got coming up on the channel, maybe a gem venture in the future.